My journey in becoming a worship leader started uh, my freshman year of college. I came to school to be a psychology major. That sounded like a good plan for me. I'd always done music, but I've more just thought that music would just be a fun hobby of mine. I never thought it to be something that I would really seriously pursue in my life. But when I got to college, uh, people started asking me to do worship stuff at the school. I was really just flattered. I was like, that's really nice of you to ask me. So I started doing that, and it was really great. And then one day, the dean of the worship arts department, his name's Warren Anderson, uh, he came up to me and he asked me if I would be interested in actually leading chapel my sophomore year of college. And again, I was, I was very flattered that he had asked me that, but I wasn't a worship major, nor had, had thought a whole lot about being a worship leader. But when he asked me, I think still in the moment of fear or whatever it was that was holding me from it, I said no. But in that conversation, something clicked with me that maybe I should be pursuing worship. Maybe there's something here for me. Uh, Warren came up to me again and uh, asked me if I wanted to be a worship leader at his church. And I was like, all right, uh, if I want to be a worship leader, I should start leading worship. And so I started leading worship at this church. Um, it was a smaller church. Uh, it was a about a hundred person congregation, mostly older. Um, and I, I think I knew in the back of my mind that for forever, uh, this wasn't the kind of congregation I felt called to in the long run. But I had a friend in my life who once told me something that our job as worship leaders is to be faithful to the community we've been blessed with. At any church, size, whatever the size is, there are people coming wanting to engage in worship, and they need a worship leader. And very shortly into that process, um, an opportunity at this uh, another church came up for me, about a 400-person church. They were like, you want to be our worship leader? Sure. So your first Sunday is going to be Easter Sunday. And I was like, oh, that's good. And it was like a... Like 650 people came that weekend, and I that was I went from like a not being worship leader, 100 person church, 650 people. So that was like a, a whole uh, new adventure for me, and uh, I was there for about nine months, and then through that process, the Lord opened up a door for me to be at the church I'm at now, which is now a multi-campus mega church kind of model, and I was like 19, 20 years old, so very young. They had a lot of a lot of faith in me. Um, this whole idea of getting paid as a worship leader started to come up. When I came into that process, I was very much in this spirit of like, well, man, this is such a blessing. Thank you guys for paying me. I, I, I don't need to be paid if you don't need me to. They're like, no, no, no. You need to be paid. You're a, on staff at a church. You should be getting paid. And I'd never thought about it that way before. But something at this first, this 400-person uh, church I really learned is that, yeah, you should be getting paid, but if you wouldn't do it for free, why are you doing it? I don't feel worried about my future anymore. I think I used to be very stressed about my future and very stressed about what the next step was in my life. I'm just excited to see what's gonna happen. And I'm excited for the fact that I don't have to worry about what the future's gonna hold and what it's gonna look like because at the end of the day, what I would plan for to happen is not going to be near as good as what he would have done in it anyways. When I think back to, to that decision I made to change from, you know, going in this direction of psychology to worship, a lot of people get very stressed and anxious about what is the Lord's call for their life and what is the Lord's desire for their life. I believe with all my heart that had I stuck with psychology, the Lord would have used me in that. I once heard it said that wisdom is not choosing the right option. It's in whatever option you choose, doing it wisely. Make a decision. Try it. You'll figure out fairly quickly if you don't want to be a part of that anymore. I think a lot of people sit in this, I don't know, I don't really know what I want to do, this like middle ground, this like limbo of decision. If you were to make a decision, you'll know very quickly how you feel about that decision you've made. I was able to choose worship and not just be like, oh, I'll be a worship major. Start leading worship in a church and actually pursuing it, not just I'll try it. If you're going to try something, go for it. Become invested in that decision and commit to that decision. And when that happened, even at the, the first church I was at, the 100-person church, 
I was on this, I got put on this stage to lead worship, and I loved every single minute of it. My name is Jake Cartmel, and I'm a worship leader.